Warm greetings from VGM Hospital. Here we have our case capsule, EUS guided hepaticogastrostomy. This is a 58 year old who presented with hilar, who is a known case of hilar cholangiocarcinoma. She was under palliative care. She opted for it years ago. She underwent ERCP in 2019. Hilar stricture was there. Spyglass cholangioscopy DS showed nodular friable tissue ingrowth and abnormal vessels, indicating abnormal tissue, probably malignant. We did biopsies and the biopsy histopathology showed a probable cholangiocarcinoma. And now she was lost for follow-up and then she came back in 2021. She had already undergone, you know, it's, they had removed the plastic stents and they put in an uncovered biliary stems in the right hepatic duct and she had also undergone a gastrojejunostomy for pyloric stricture. She presented with obstructive jaundice now. And the total bilirubin was 12, direct was 10, SGOT 78, SGPT 74, alkaline phosphatase 462. And she had recurrent, feature, recurrent fevers on and off, indicating cholangitis. Total counts was elevated at admission. The MRCP showed moderate IHPR dilatation in both lobes of liver, and that was probably during, due to a stricture or debris more predominantly in the left hepatic duct. So we planned for an EUS-guided hepaticogastrostomy. So what are these EUS-guided biliary drainage? They provide an excellent alternative to biliary drainages, which is the traditional uh, ERCP and PTBD, as we know. So here we see that this is uh, the most commonly use technique where rendezvous technique, what they do is uh, retrogradely uh, puncture the CBD, retrogradely pass the wire down through the ampulla out. It's used when difficult cannulation is there because of a large mass, ampullary, uh, you know, uh, fleshy ampulla, you can't find the uh, CBD tract. So this is how you pass the wire in, then the wire is pulled out and uh, uh, retrogradely the uh, cannulation is done. The other technique is cholidocodiurnostomy, where a directly a stent is placed from the duodenum into the biliary tract. Again, via EUS. These are all EUS guided techniques. And here are the other things from the stomach. Antigrade stenting can be done where the left hepatic duct is accessed uh, by puncturing the stomach and the left lobe of liver. And hepaticogastrostomy, where a stent is placed here between the left lobe of liver and stomach. So that is what we did for this patient because she had predominant dilatation in the left lobe we targeted first and she already had a SEMS in the right lobe. So we cannot cannulate the left lobe in any other route other than a hepaticogastrostomy or through a PTBD route. And the patient did not want a catheter and a, uh, you know, a bag outside. And so she definitely wanted only an internal stent. So this is the, uh, these are the things used. This is the linear EUS scope, and this is the cystotome, which we use to create the tract. And this is the special stent called the geobore stent, where you can see this portion is a covered portion, 70%, and 30% is an uncovered portion. This uncovered portion stays inside the liver. The covered portion is outside. Uh, it could be slightly in the peritoneum, but mostly in the stomach wall and jetting into the stomach. This is why this, need, this needs to be covered because we don't want a biliary leak. And this is the uh, metal stent uh, uh, this is di to dilate the tract. Now here is the Erby system, which we use in this procedure. So here you can see the left lobe of the liver and the stent is there in the hilar region. And here we have to target the segment three, which is in accessible through the stomach and not segment through two, which we see through the esophagus. Uh, we don't want to go into the mediastinum. So this is the 19 gauge needle. It's the Cook's echo tip needle, which is punctured. Why we choose this? We don't want to strip the guide wire, which happens with other needles sometimes. So here we are entering into the dilated duct system, we need at least some prominence here, not much of dilatation, but we were able to successfully enter the biliary tract in the left hepatic duct. And you can see as uh, passing first, uh, you aspirating bile, then putting in contrast, you can see the dilatation of the uh, left hepatic system. And here, then we pass the cystotome, which is an eight French cystotome, 
we need to go in for further 8.5 because we need to pass in an 8.5 delivery system. So then we have to exchange as less as possible because too many exchanges, will the wire will fall out. So next we pass in the metal uh, dilator, you can see the metal dilator going in and then the delivery system is going in. You can see the uh, marker here uh, entering inside. This is the 8.5 French delivery system. When it expands, it's one centimeter and 10 centimeters in length. You can see it's slowly expanding and we want at least a lot of portion in the liver. So we have to choose the duct uh, accordingly to put some, you know, most four centimeter in the liver and outside. Uh, we have the rest of the stent and you can see copious bile drainage indicating success. And here, <clears throat> we did a review ultrasound on post-op day one. The stent was fine and there was no IHP dilatation in the left lobe, no free fluid in the abdomen. So uh, that is the most rated complication, biliary leak. Pre and post procedure values were 12, uh, came down to 4.5, 10 came down to 3.4 in six days and 78 came down to 49 and 462 to 333. Later on, we placed uh, SEMS inside the already existing SEMS in the right hepatic duct. We had to go through the uh, GJ loop and then we entered. So when we see US guided hepaticogastrostomy versus PTBT, this is really a question now. So uh, this is a study which was done in 51 patients, where the 31 HES and 20 PTPD patients, everything it was comparable and in the adverse rates, technical success, clinical success, overall reintervention rate was lower after hepaticogastrostomy and uh, hospital stay was less after hepaticogastrostomy. But yes, it is safe only in effective hands. U.S. hepaticogastrostomy, when performed cautiously, is a good alternative to PTBD. And that's me signing off from VGM Hospital. Thank you very much for your patient listening.